You may have seen a crosshatch on tools around your machine shop and on high-end parts. We're going to compare the two different types of grinding styles and show you what the Studer S41 can do. Welcome back guys, this is Chris from Titans of CNC. Today we're going to be talking about shoulder grinding. So I've got these two test pieces here. On one of them I mounted a 30 degree wheel and ground the shoulders. On this one I mounted a 90 degree wheel, dressed a Form 9 dress into it and achieved a crosshatch finish. And you can see the difference between a crosshatch shoulder and a no crosshatch. So we've been doing a lot of grinding with a 30 degree wheel, but today I mounted a 90 degree wheel, which is known as a straight wheel, and I put a different type of dress on it so we can achieve a crosshatch. So let's discuss what a crosshatch is. As the part sits in the machine and it's in line with the wheel, if it's cocked one way or the other, it's gonna be represented by the grinding swirl you're gonna get on that face. So if you're canned one way, it's gonna be represented by the grinding swirl going up. If you're canned the other way, it's gonna be represented by that grinding swirl going down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna straighten that part out with the wheel, so where the wheel is touching on both sides of that shoulder and the swirls are gonna overlap each other, creating a cross hatch. This is a good visual representation of having your part perfectly square with your wheel. So I mounted a Tyrolit 80 grit H wheel and we're gonna put a Form 9 dress in it. Let's get into what the dress looks like. So as you can see in the definition, I selected a Form 9. The main dimensions don't change. Let's talk about our technology. For the grinding and dressing, we're gonna be spinning at about 1400 RPM. The max RPM on this wheel is 1800, but we're gonna start at 14 to see what the wheel does. Dressing amount in X and Z, we're gonna do four tenths in both. X is the front of that wheel, Z is the side of that wheel. So with our Form 9, let's look at the left side of it. For the shoulder height, the bigger that is, the more aggressive you can be with that side of that wheel. For this, you want it to be between 30 and 50 thousandths, but we're not gonna to be too aggressive with it. We're just gonna use a 40 thousandths. For the total recess being 800 thousandths, that means we can only grind with about 800 thousandths of that wheel. So if we wanted to do something bigger, we'd have to use something like this, which is called a cluster diamond. And what the cluster diamond would do is it would be mounted in a tool post and it would shave the side of that wheel down and if we wanted to, we could grind all the way down to that hub. But for this application, we don't need to shave it yet, so we're just gonna use it like it is to grind those two shoulders. Let's go ahead and put our Form 9 dress on it. So it's going across Z right now. So that's dressing the front of that wheel. We'll slow it down a little bit. It's gonna come across that radius. There's the radius. Now it's going to go in that 15,000 we talked about. Now it's going to go all the way down to 115 and X. That's well, going to give us our relief. That's a Form 9. Check that out. So our wheel is off, but I'm going to show you what the wheel looks like because we made all those changes, but they're so minute that we need to have a good representation. I took a popsicle stick and I pressed it up against the wheel, and this will really show how that wheel goes across the OD and up into the shoulder of that wheel. It's not just a straight wheel, there's a lip on it. And we're only gonna be grinded, as you can see right here, with that very tip of that radius. We're gonna cover that in more detail on our Grinding Academy, don't you check it out. Let's go ahead and load up our part and use an angle plunge and go ahead and grind both of our surfaces. We're gonna use the same type of grind to do both faces, but we're gonna start with the big one. So let's talk a little bit about this program. So as you can see here, my X is at 2.8 and my Z is at minus 1.78. Since it's at a 45 degree angle and I've got 20,000 stock allowance, Z offset is gonna be 10 thousandths away. And then my X offset is gonna be 20 thousandths away. And that's where that wheel is gonna come down to is 20 in X and 10 off in Z. And it's gonna vector grind down until our finished size. So I stopped the machine right now. It's at minus 1.77 and it's gonna to go to a minus 1.78. So it's 10 thousandths away, and it's gonna grind in 10, and then we're gonna walk the wheel down, and I'll show you what I mean in X. So now that we're at 2.820, it's gonna start, it's, the Sensitron's gonna kick on, and it's gonna feed in until it picks up that face, then it's gonna start grinding. So we'll go ahead and go 100%. So 
So angle grinding is something I like to do with the straight wheel just because it's less force on the, on the part, especially when you're grinding shoulders. If you just plunge a shoulder with a straight wheel, it's a lot of force on that part and it could cause that part to warp, especially if it's real thin. You're almost just rubbing alongside that part rather than just either pushing it or pushing down. So this way you're kind of just coasting alongside it. You get better consistency whether you have a 30 degree wheel or a 90 degree wheel. The shop I came from, we vector ground just about everything. It just ended, let's look at our part. Came out really nice. This is one of those things that shows a really good representation of when you get your part perfectly square. This is a really cool technique. I'm glad I got to show y'all. This is a good visual representation of having your part perfectly square with your wheel. A nice cross hatch is gonna show you that you're pretty flat. It's not perfect, you still need to inspect your part, but it's a good visual reference. So cross hatch in the industry, Sometimes it's required, sometimes companies don't want it. I think it looks cool. It's just different technique to show y'all. So tell me what y'all like better. Do y'all like the cross hatch or do y'all like the smooth finish? Leave me a comment down below. Thanks for hanging around. I'm glad I got to show y'all some more grinding techniques. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more grinding content. I'll see you on the next one.